Hey, Quinteros, what's up, man? The students filing into John Reader's English 99 class carry their books and pens in large plastic bags instead of backpacks. They wear blue prison uniforms and faded black tattoos. But those are just about the only clues this classroom is in a prison. College pennants line the walls, a whiteboard lays out the day's agenda, and the students quickly take their seats, except for one who's eager to discuss the text. He, and here's the thing, he keeps making mistakes over and over, over again. Over, over, and over. You're, you're, you're waiting, you have all these decades of experience, he's, he's trying to capture when he was a dumb 20-year-old. Reader says that's common for this group. The level of critical thought and the commentary is just much higher than I would typically get in, in a room, you know, teaching the same class to a room of like 18 to 21-year-olds. Um, these guys draw from a pretty remarkable pool of experiences and they're able to, to, to leverage that a lot in our, in our classroom. The class is on reading and writing analytically and more or less marks the halfway point on the student's journey to an associate's degree. Things move a little slower behind bars, so they're expected to graduate in 2020, but their degrees will be no different than those earned outside of prison. Reader says his class is just as rigorous, drawing on psychology, philosophy, and poetry to explore themes of education and power. The idea is that most folks, I, I would assume, come into the classroom, if they're going to yoke ideas of education and power together, they would think, oh, well, higher ed leads to empowerment. And that's a great narrative. I love that narrative. But I also want them to think about the ways structures of education dovetail with structures of power in U.S. society. Um, and so we're not just thinking about it in terms of personal transformation and empowerment, although that is an important part of why they're here. Um, I also want them to think about some of the social inequities that get, get reproduced in, in, within systems of education in the U.S. And that strikes a chord with 34-year-old Kyle Bachman. He essentially grew up in Orange County's criminal justice system. Most of the schools I went to growing up were probation schools. So um, it's either you come to school where the, you know, there's probation officers, and uh, there was also staff that worked for the, the, the county, you know, like uh, probation staff. So basically, I felt like if I didn't go, I'm going to get locked up. Bachman earned his high school diploma in juvenile hall. Later, a carjacking and robbery, along with sentencing enhancements for being in a gang, landed him in state prison with 15 years to life. He takes responsibility for his actions, but he's also beginning to work out some of the larger forces that may have brought him here, thanks to Reader's class. I just happened to, you know, bring about discussion like hey what do you guys think about you know do you see some kind of connection like how you know the the one percent you know of the rich family you know and and, and the upper elite with the with the kids of judges and lawyers and you know the people that make all this money how, how they're taught so differently you know to then then as opposed to the way we're taught and 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 something i wonder is like is that same percentage that one percent is that same percentage also only in here because it's a very small number of people who come from, like I said, that type of environment. In his own way, Bachman describes philosopher Paulo Freire's seminal theory from Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Freire says oppressed people are educated in a banking system where teachers deposit knowledge without bringing students' strengths and experiences to bear. A better education system, he says, is one where students think critically and work to solve problems. I'm just able to come up with this basic concept and I have no way to even look this stuff on the internet or anything. I got some, you know, some studies from the 70s, and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm getting a little suspicious here because the people you're talking about going to the banking system are the type of people that are usually in, in the surroundings in here, you know. Bachman says he hopes the class helps him prove to the parole board he can re-enter society. He'd like to become a drug and alcohol counselor. Jason Hicks helps coordinate education programs at Donovan and says the prison benefits too. The program actually takes place on a general population yard where there's racial politics and you know when you go out on the yard in, in, in uh, on facility A you'll see segregation of races and that sort of disappears when you get into the classroom you'll notice that you know the guys are willing to help each other out from different races and support each other um, I think it's it's really showing rehabil rehabilitation you know, at its best. And it's expected the benefits of the program might extend beyond the barbed wire. Corrections officials and policymakers are investing in these types of programs to try to bring down the rate of former inmates who struggle on the outside and return to prison. Megan Burks, KPBS News.